I'm pretty sure many of you guys know this video here, the technology that's replacing the green screen. But the truth is, this technology is gonna, re gonna be replaced again because of the fast changes in technology, especially in software. So let's have a look at the video and let's see why it gets already you know replaced. So first of all, this video here is from October 2020. So it's already a year and a half ago and uh, we got a lot of software updates since then. Green so. screen and blue screen. You know it becomes the mist-covered planet, deserted jungle, background for a ball, hacked athletics, panoramic water, So they are true. So. So many things are possible with the green screen, but probably many of you guys also know that green screen can take a long, long time to do. And uh, it's also hard to achieve. I mean, depending on your skills, depending on where you're coming from. But I know many of my subscribers uh, tried green screen and just green screen replacement. It's hard to match everything, right? What happens when the imaginary planet is already there? Yeah. And that's where it comes into your game. So actually, they they also had here. This green is a fake green. Yeah, this is this footage what is from the imaginary planet. Is from this scene here. That's so funny. Um, because obviously, this is a shot where they have this huge LED wall in the back, and I think we will see this it's now. There. The moment you step in the middle of the volume, you're just. You're just there. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is a huge advantage of the LED wall. If you go into, um, not only if you have this real volume that they have here, um, but even if it's just like a corner, an LED wall on the right side and on, on the back, um, just the lighting alone for the people who are within this volume and looking around, no, I have no doubt this is an, is an amazing feeling. Yeah, so definitely. So this has volume is compared to the green screen, you just look around and have only green. It's the epic sounding name for the combination of high resolution LED panels. Imagine awesome huge TV screens wrapping around a stage. The physical set design matched to the panels and 3D models plopped into an environment the same way they do in a video game. Then it can respond to camera movement to simulate the real world. Disney. I mean, that's great, but especially today, that's nothing. Uh, special. So we have Unreal Engine, we have Eximetry. You can do this also in Blender or other 3D apps. You have a virtual camera and move it around. So much cheaper. Yeah, and the main reason why I'm saying this is that um, everything becomes a software. Yeah, and we are in this accelerating process that more and more things becoming software. And also this camera, I just drag it into the level and I have a camera and I can move it around. I can animate it and in ways that wouldn't be possible uh, with a real camera. Like virtual cameras are huge and they are becoming more and more important in the future, I have no doubt. So I have this camera here and I can do everything. So let's change the focal length of the camera. So you can see my camera window and it's just changed the, to, to a wider lens. And I don't have to change the lens, just change the settings. Um, and I'm already in my virtual world. So I'm pretty sure everything's, everything becomes software. And I know many people don't want to hear that. Yes, but also plus the, I'm pretty sure that the LED wall is becoming a software very soon. This is The Mandalorian, a live action Star Wars TV show used this technique. Is it physically like confusing being on, on this set? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the thing is like you're, you're shooting all day, let's say in the same exact scene. And like you're at that location. It doesn't feel like it's something fake. It just feels like an extension of a regular set stage. You know, you gotta be careful because there are times where people don't see where the end of the stage is and where the LEDs are. Yeah. So I have no doubt, like being in this volume, as I mentioned before, like that this is like an amazing feeling that as if you're really there. And so I want to be honest. So I, I think that this technology is going to be replaced from not a long time from now. 
But of course I want to have an LED wall, yeah? I admire the people who are working in this with this technology. I think best case would be a huge studio, green screen over there and LED wall over there right now. But when they say you feel as if you are there, I mean, since this video, we got this huge popular uh, announcement from so many companies like transitioning to the metaverse with this virtual reality. Then you put on this headset I'm, I'm not sure if you ever tried this, but it's as if you are there. You don't need a $20 million LED wall. It feels like as if you are there. And yes, these things can happen as well, that you step somewhere and don't know where to go, right? As Mandalorian VFX supervisor Ian Milham tweeted, the set crew and brain bar operating the panels let them radically change environments in just a few hours or be on set as they launched it into hyperspace. So here's the thing, you can see that they have uh, where they have this huge environments, but they still have a lot of elements in front of the LED wall. And here's the big, big pro on a green screen. If you're in front of a green screen, like I'm now right now, yeah, you can put yourself in a virtual world and you can have foreground elements. Yeah, now I'm behind the screens. That's virtual. We don't. I don't need real uh, real screens here. Yeah, and I can make huge, huge, huge camera movements. Yeah, and now I'm not lit because there's no light, especially hitting my face. But when we are changing the angle, I'm back. Okay, so that's. Uh, I mean, that's a big pro for the green screen. Put yourself into a virtual uh, world and not just in front of it. So that's a huge, huge con if you ask me um, of an LED wall. Uh, I mean, if they have the budget and put it on the, all these elements in the studio, yeah, why not? I'm pretty sure it's fun. Yeah, and I, w I would love to be part of such a production. Um, but I don't think that this is the future for a long time. Bar operating the panels, let them radically change environments in just a few hours or be on set as they launched it into hyperspace. My normal working life is very much behind a computer in a dark room somewhere in the corner. Yeah, this won't change, of course. We will spend more and more time uh, in front of the PC yeah, or computer. Now I'm actually in there with the gaffer, with the top designers, with the set designers. Most people that we would never see because we're in the post-production process. It was very exhilarating. But yeah, and also this will be just more and more like this. Also like working with virtual characters and so on. Yeah, everyone like, like uh, sitting together in front of, like, like, it looks like a gaming streaming session probably. Sets like this one weren't just fun for Charmaine. They helped to remove creative roadblocks. As a compositor, we're the ones who kind of take all the renders take all the CG elements and put them together to make it look like it's a seamless integrated photo. So think of it as like advanced Photoshop, but for dealing with uh, moving imagery. Charmaine worked on this scene in The Last Jedi. We get this footage of Kylo in front of a green screen. Um, if you're lucky, this green screen will be evenly lit with no seams and it's a piece of cake. That's never the scenario, spending the time almost frame by frame, making sure we can remove that green screen. So, that so that's not at, um, the case anymore because right now my green screen, uh, this is, you can definitely see here the dark parts in the corners. These are bad parts and you can see some of my videos. I had an even better, uh, worse lit green screen. Of course, the best thing is always have a well lit green screen. But as this girl uh, say, uh, correctly says, that's not always the case. And um, no, but the keying, the keying is so much better today. Yeah, and we have like all this. She was talking about this composite features. Come on, I, I'm changing the light that I get uh, receive the virtual lights. I'm casting shadows. So we have here all these tiny little things and the keyers in the last, uh, I, uh, so this this key here from this app is uh, very good for a long, long time and it's live, yeah? I'm recording this live here right now as I'm I'm streaming this to OBS and I'm recording this screen. So there's no post-production work that this girl is talking about. So 
it's not true anymore. So it's not a frame by framework, especially when you work with DaVinci Resolve in post production and you have 3D Kia, it's phenomenal. We can put Kylo on top of that. Removing a green screen is actually still pretty hard. For one, it doesn't work with green characters. Also not true. So it's highly exaggerated that, that it does not work with green characters. I have this video here on my YouTube channel and it's called Green Screen Rules No Longer True in 2022. And here's the example of, um, of me I'm being in front of a green screen and I'm wearing here, that's the bad, bad lit green screen. And I'm wearing a green screen suit. Yeah, and I uh, showcase that you can still wear green in front of a green screen. It's possible today. Yeah, because you have like the subtraction tools. You can see here, this girl has the green back and when she's later in front of, um, um, no, here in the scene, she still has her green nails and also this green back. So it's, this is highly exaggerated, like this, um, this scene here. So now that's, that's not true. And I'm, in, I'm pretty sure it wasn't true back in the days, like one and a half years ago. No, that's, they're pretty good keys out now. Removing one solid color or keying can look good, but you still need detail work. See how these fine branches just disappear? The perspective of the background also doesn't naturally change. Um, so that's with this small things, that's still a challenge. So, but then he's going to the next point. Uh, what's not uh, naturally The changed. perspective of the background also doesn't naturally change. So this even works so much better, so much better. Um, in these virtual environments here, you can see I'm sticking to the background and it makes totally sense um, when, when in changing the perspective. Um, so we have tracking things. So it, when you work with an LED wall, there are still a lot of like issues like that you really get everything work. I mean, it's then it gets really expensive. You need a lot of people. And I mean, it's, it's possible, it's fun, yeah? And again, I have nothing against an LED wall, but today working within this metaverse 3D environment is definitely much better than what this guy just says about the green screen. That has to be designed into the final composite. Did you, did you so the final composite is always live now. It's always real time. It's not in post-production. No, you can do this, but in, in our case here, it's real time. Ditching the, ditching the green screen and projecting or playing the image behind the actors gets you closer, but not quite there. You know, they're to always talking that the green screen is behind the object, but not anymore. Like the replacement is the three-dimensional world. No! Oh. You can get detail in an illusion of depth and better light. Instead of green screen spilling on the actor, you get blue sky. So that's definitely the most, the single best way uh, thing of the LED wall, that the light is projected onto the character. So here's the thing. I saw a lot of LED walls that are just not powerful, not bright enough to have to cast enough lights on, on the characters. Yeah, so then you don't have the effect you spend like maybe not half a million dollar and only $100,000 for an LED wall and then you then it's not powerful enough. Oh no. On the other side, we have here in Eximetry um, these features like, uh, first of all, he, he was talking about spill, like the green spill. I mean, getting rid of the green spill is part of a Kia today, like of every Kia. And um, no, we have these, um, these other features like light drop. So this is exactly, can you see around on the corners of my hair? Let me make it bigger of my hair and also um, around my here, yeah, everything here on my shoulders. That's this light drop. And I can change the blend mode, the intensity and so on. Um, let's change it really click to is the color dodge. Yeah, just to make it a little more extreme. That's not natural anymore. 
Um, yeah, but you get the idea. Light Rob, I mean, this is just the click of a button. Now I get to be a person who's doing the shot. I definitely like how passionate she's about this. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. I, I highly respect this whole crew here of this, of this product. And I can help basically finalize. <laughs> and I highly admire them. So what they're about to show now is exactly uh, the same what we're doing, right? Um, the process is different. We prepare the scene and then we film it and maybe do some color correction and editing and that's it. But the f um, scene creation is now the very first a thing. shot in camera. It just makes it a more um, cohesive filmmaking process. And this puts us right in there next to everyone else who's creating these shows or films. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, this is the video why I got into virtual production, probably so many of you guys, why I heard about this fantastic, phenomenal technology. Again, I highly admire this group of people. Also, that they were so early stage and I've no doubt there's so many things and issues and to figure out and so on. It, it, it wasn't hard to do, and it, but probably was a lot of fun. Here's the thing, one important thing that I think many people are not aware of, no matter if it's in the film industry or wherever, is that changes in technology and software is accelerating at a speed that it's in future is getting faster and faster. So, and this technology, they say they replace the green screen, so obviously not, but there are alternatives from coming from different sites. There are even like uh, apps that you only have your phone, you have a look in it and you don't even need a green screen, but um, you are cut out of wherever you are right now. And what I always think is like a, an LED wall is a very expensive piece of hardware. And I'm not so sure with the metaverse coming very quickly, I'm not so sure so how long you will be able to use this LED walls if you get an invest in LED walls. Maybe you get a loan for 10, 20 years or so on. I'm not sure like in 10, 20 years we need LED walls anymore. And that's not that, that's not my wish thinking. I just believe that changes are just coming so quickly. But I'm pretty sure that one thing won't be replaced anytime soon and this is 3D space. So when we work here in Unreal Engine or Ximetry or whatever app we're working or if you work with Blender, um, I'm pretty sure this is the future and this is not the future only for the next seven years, this is the future for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Do I want the LED wall to be replaced? No, definitely not. Um, maybe there's one side note regarding LED walls, what they obviously didn't mention in a video like this. So there are issues with LED walls, like not only tracking issues, you have to get rid of some artifacts in the background uh, that happen when you film uh, through the camera and you have this LED wall in the back, maybe you saw this before. So I'm pretty sure we will uh, still have some fun with an LED wall. So if I don't have to get a loan for this, I will definitely get one. And, um, but I'm looking for what, what the future brings. I deeply believe that we have a very bright future and I'm looking forward to it. So with that said, thanks so much for watching. Check out other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about the technology I'm using. I really appreciate it. Also, if you visit my website, moons-mooniverse.com, I have more videos there. I have some courses. So with that said, thanks so much for watching and see you there.